Hey guys, welcome to my analysis on the Saw franchise. Now this is my longest video yet, man. It took a long time to make, so I hope you guys enjoy. But be warned, major spoilers ahead, along with some very violent scenes from the films. You've been warned. Now I'm going to split this video into three parts. This intro, where I summarize my experiences with the franchise. Then I'll review Saw 1 up to Jigsaw. And then at the end, I'll talk about how, in my opinion, the writers messed up and retconned the character of John Kramer, aka Jigsaw. So, if I'm making a video this big on the Saw franchise, you'd think I was a major fan, right? And uh, no. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong, I love the first one, but I don't like the direction the sequels took. Still, I have a lot to say about these films because, well, let me tell you a little bit about myself personally. During my teens, this franchise played a big part in my life. I was technically raised with these films. I was an aspiring young filmmaker. This is a little short film I did as a kid. Yes, that little fat Elvis looking kid is me. I was 13. <laughs> and back then, I studied films like It Gave Me Oxygen. So, as you can imagine, little 14 year old me had a field day with Saw 1. It inspired me because it was made by young first time filmmakers. But then I became a musician at 15 and my film goals took a 13 year hiatus. Yeah, enjoy that full head of hair while it lasts, you little shit. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, I followed the franchise throughout the rest of my teens. I watched them with my friends, and during the process of getting to know my first love, we'd snuggle on the sofa watching these films. I can still remember her getting disturbed and hiding under the blanket. It's so cliched, I know, I know. But I was literally watching the Saw films when I was falling in love for the first time. So, as a moviegoer, as an artist, in my relationships, these films have played a big part in my life, even the ones I don't like. But, despite all of that information, nostalgic bias is not enough to make me a fan. What went wrong for me? Two things. One is real simple. Eventually, the story became really far-fetched and I couldn't believe it anymore. And two, this one's a bit complex, but I'm not a fan of the violence. The way the sequels relied on gore to such an extent that Saul's name eventually became synonymous with the genre torture porn. Now, hold up, I completely support violence in films, okay? I myself can be a major gore fan when it's in the right context. Sometimes violence can be really fun. Other times it can be an effective tool to get us scared. But to me, Saul tried to make the violence sick yet enjoyable. Hence why Saul 7 was in 3D, right? The violence was bordering on entertaining. And that pisses me off because the franchise began as far more than that. But it's not just the violence itself I don't like, it's the way the characters get double fucked. What I mean by that is, someone will be put in a trap and will hurt themselves in order to escape. But for various reasons, even though they might succeed or get quite far, they'll still fail and die. Or they might survive but then get arbitrarily killed off later on. The characters get double fucked. And to me, it rarely feels like it's put there to serve the plot. It's just the writers trying to squeeze as much violence out of the scene as possible. And as a result, there's little tension. I know the characters will die because the writers have little use for them if they're not suffering or dying. So eventually, the violence became something I had to power through in hopes of finding a good story. That's why no matter how much the franchise pissed me off, I always stuck with it. I hoped it would go back to its psychological roots. But by the time Soul 7 came out, I realized that me caring about the story in these films was like me caring about the story in porn. 
It's just an excuse to see characters get fucked. <laughs> but hey, if you like the gore, that's fine with me. Enjoying fictional torture is not the worst thing you can do with your life. I'm not judging you at all. I'm not morally superior to you just because I'm not into it. I'm glad you have your fun with it, you do you. These are just my feelings of the genre and what the Saw franchise did for me. I know they say that this genre isn't sadistic, it's masochistic, because you're imagining yourself in the character's shoes. That might be true, but for me, the violence just felt perverse. The story died, and the violence became the creative crutch of the franchise. So, apart from the movie Jigsaw, when it came out, I haven't touched the series in about a decade. It pissed me off that much. But now, we got Spiral just around the corner, and for the first time in a long time, I'm excited for a Saw movie. Now, it's mainly due to Chris Rock being the lead, it's a very non-conventional choice, and the fact that he's the producer and has pushed really hard to make this happen proves that there's real passion behind it. Not to mention, Mr. Glass himself is in it. I'm not expecting a masterpiece, but I am still hopeful. So, I figured I'd rewatch the franchise as a refresher and to get my thoughts out there. But, I do want to say this real quick. Despite my ill feelings toward these films, there is a lot that I appreciate about them. A lot I respect. But I don't want to keep repeating myself when I talk about each film, so I want to quickly show my respects here. So first of all, I've always admired how they actually released these films once a year. That's incredible hard work, fair play to them. And despite how I feel about the Jigsaw character changing throughout the franchise, more of that at the end of the video. Tobin Bell was always fantastic in these films, and he stole every scene he's in. Addiction is not simple, Joe! Wake up! And yes, I hate the violence, but apart from the 3D effects in Saw 7, I think the special effects during the violence are very impressive. Check out the pendulum trap, for example. This guy gets his body cut up, and obviously it's not his real body, but in the background you have a guy off camera breathing into tubes blowing up the prosthetic body with air trying to make it look like he's breathing that's fucking incredible plus as much as i hate the gore i can't deny it was certainly a unique experience seeing this with my friends in the cinema squirming and groaning with the crowd and speaking of the violence, there are some nuances to these traps that are hard to see and I appreciate that. Like for example, in Saw 2, this poisoned woman gets her arms caught in this trap. But if you look closely, you'll see a key there. A key that would have gotten her her antidote. Simple, but effective. Proving that plenty of thought went into this. And the franchise is full of these subtleties. Little seeds are planted without you noticing. You'll see the villains working on a trap, but it won't come into play until one of the later films. Loads of questions are set up, but only answered as the films go on. And side characters, who don't make much of an impression at first, sometimes become main characters in the subsequent films. That's fucking cool. And Saul definitely went down the same path as other horror franchises. You know, first one was good, then the sequels were inferior but more violent, you know? But Saul did that in its own way, and Jigsaw never turned into some immortal supernatural slasher spouting jokes and one-liners every chance he got. The franchise does have its own identity. And yes, there are some Saul sequels I hate, but I can't deny that I gladly watch them over the other bad horror sequels any day, so clearly they did something right with these films. So now that I got out of the way... Saw 1. Man, this is one of the most inspiring films I've ever seen. Mainly based on how it was made. I don't want to talk too much about the story behind the scenes, but I have to go into it a little bit because it just adds to my love for this film. James Wan and Lee Wanell made this. They were both young as hell, fresh out of film school, and then they made this little short film to showcase Saw's concept. That became successful, so they got a million dollars for the film. Originally, they wanted to cast no names, but their script was so good, big names wanted to sign up to this. 
Hence why motherfucking Danny Glover is in this. What the fuck? Talk about good luck. And you know what? Considering that these are first time filmmakers with a limited budget and shooting schedule, they only shot this in 18 days. What they pulled off was incredible. You can just see the passion bleeding through the screen. It's got a great look, nice camera tricks, the characters are strong, and the mysteries and puzzles are gripping. What I didn't know was a positive at the time is that it's not too violent. Of course it's violent as hell, but a lot of it is off screen, and that's not just due to the budget, it's also because they didn't want to make a gore fest. The traps are simply there to show us that our heroes are in danger. You know, it's more psychological that way. And it's really easy to imagine yourself in their position because they don't deserve what they're going through. They're just flawed people who aren't living life to its fullest, which is something we can all relate to. And the villain, Jigsaw, is flat out terrifying. He barely gets any screen time, he's mostly just a voice. But that makes him even more interesting. And when it comes to the ending, yeah, it's one of my favorites. The iconic soundtrack begins playing, Jigsaw stands up and then locks us in the room effectively. <laughs> it's just amazing. But of course, there is a lot wrong with this film. I'm sorry to piss off some of the fanboys, but I'm just being honest here. Yeah, the pig mask and Billy the puppet are iconic pieces of imagery. I just find them corny. I'm sorry. There, I said it. <laughs> I really do love the performances by Lee Whannell and Carrie Elways. But at times, yeah, it does feel like they're forcing it a bit. And that whole poison cigarette scene is remarkably dumb. Dr. Gordon wants Adam to fake his own death, so he turns off the lights. What the hell are you doing? I want you to play along with me on this. You still want that cigarette? Um, yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Seriously, turning off that light won't make your plan obvious at all. Yeah. Ah! Jesus, that was our way out! No, it wasn't. <laughs> I can't believe that made it in. And of course, there's plenty of problems surrounding the iconic foot sewing scene. Dr. Gordon barely puts any effort in to get the phone, and then once he cuts off his foot, the phone just magically disappears. And it's never seen, nor mentioned in any of the sequels. It's just gone now. Add to that, yes, I, I, sorry, I can't get past it. You can clearly see his fucking foot there. I know it had a low budget, but come on. That, they could have fixed that. And during the finale, that whole line... key to that chain is in the bathtub. It's so fucking awful. Like, why would Jigsaw put the key in the bath with Adam? You know, if Adam was lucky enough to not pull the plug and lose the key down the drain, he'd have just unlocked himself and walked out what lesson would adam learn from that i don't know why jigsaw did that of course it's easy to get past because the key only has like 15 seconds of screen time but that makes it even more pointless there was no need for them to put that in but the biggest issue that i have with soul is that it's one of those very rare cases where the sequels actually managed to affect my enjoyment of the original now, let me explain, of course. In most cases, inferior sequels won't affect my opinion of the first one. But however, just like the movie Force Awakens, Saw 1 ends with a grey cliffhanger. Sadly, I don't like nor believe what most of the sequels told me. If it wasn't for the whole what happened to Dr. Gordon, this ending, although miserable, would have felt final. Sadly, they put it in there and it feels incomplete. And that is why Saw is very hard for me to recommend. You know, watch it, you may like it. Heck, you might love it as much as I do. But the story is incomplete. If you watch the sequels to get some type of closure, you're just going to get a load of violent nonsense. And yeah, you might be into that, but not a lot of people are. So it's difficult. I don't know, it depends on what you're into. So yeah, there's a lot wrong with it. I still can't help it, Saw is one of my favourite horror films, one of the best surprises for me and easily one of the most inspiring films I've ever seen. The unconventional casting, I mean Carrie always, seriously? The twist, one of the best villains I've ever seen, and the fact that the sight of these two guys chained in the bathroom 
is an image I will never forget. Guys, I'm sorry, I've got no choice. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Yeah, there's a lot wrong with it. I don't care. <laughs> Saw 2. So, this one was really successful when it came out and it pleased many fans. Many people actually prefer it to the first one. And hey, I'm happy for you guys, but I think that's insane. Saw 2, in my eyes, is a major step down from the first one. I appreciate how Saw 2 doesn't copy the first one. You know, the victims are now free to roam around a house full of traps, and I dig that. The problem is, the characters are really unlikable. They're callous, whiny, and they have zero chemistry. Plus, they're really stupid. The only smart move they make is when they're trying to break out of the house with the spiked baseball bat. Beyond that, they get themselves killed easily. They don't listen to the rules, they get their heads blown off, and seriously, all they had to do was read the codes at the back of their necks. Christ. And one of them, a character called Obby, is actually the one who's helped Jigsaw kidnap these people and put them here. Uh, okay, it's an interesting concept. The problem is, it's never explained in the film, and it's never mentioned ever again. It's quite a big plot point. I don't know why they just ignored that. Guys, the victims just suck. This whole plot bores the hell out of me. It wasn't well thought out. I don't like it. But when it comes to Jigsaw, that part is unique. You know, it's hard to find a horror film where the killer gets caught in the beginning and interviewed by the police throughout the rest of the film. And I appreciate how Jigsaw is still insane and there's decent tension between him and Eric Matthews. Speaking of which, Donnie Wahlberg gives one of the best performances in the whole franchise. He's an underrated actor, man. He had these really small roles in Sixth Sense and Dreamcatcher. Both were spellbinding. You failed me! Annie. I miss you, Annie. I miss you. So, of course, he brings that talent to these scenes, and with Tobin Bell's charisma, it works. But sadly, as great as Wahlberg is in this role, I just don't like his character, Detective Matthews. Like, sure, I want him to get his son back, but he's a crooked cop, and he's unremorseful. He's a real bully, guys. So there's no one in this film to root for. Add to that, the game Jigsaw plays with Matthews is so easy to beat. He doesn't have to saw off a limb or kill anyone. All he has to do is just sit there and listen to Jigsaw. But he doesn't. The entire plot relies on characters being stupid. I can't stand it. Plus, Jigsaw is far less interesting now that he's on screen all of the time. And I don't know why he would reveal his face, his identity, to the police. I don't get it. But... I did like aspects of the ending twist. I mean, sure, Amanda is no jigsaw, but the whole Stockholm Syndrome element is quite interesting. Plus, it's not too violent. You know, it's grim, but it doesn't go too far. In fact, this is the last film in the franchise to not be disgusting. It's only slightly more violent than the first one. But still, that's not enough to make this a high recommendation. I think Saw 2 is incredibly disappointing, and I'm going to give this a very generous 5 out of 10. Saw 3. Well, this was an improvement. I honestly think Saw 3 is solid and easily the best sequel. I didn't like Detective Matthews in Saw 2, but here, he's great. Wahlberg brings an even better performance this time round, and now that the character has been humbled, I find him much more interesting, and I finally began to care for him. Plus, his stupidity has been left at the door. He's in the exact same predicament as our heroes in Saw 1, but he gets himself out of that predicament pretty quickly and in a very smart way. I really dug his scenes and I wish he was in it a lot more. In fact, I could have done with the whole film being about him again. And Jigsaw himself is now bedridden, knocking on death's door, but still somehow calling the shots. It's original as fuck and I love it. Especially the relationship with Amanda. She's no longer wearing that poker face, so now we get to see that she's scary and deadly but very vulnerable. She's a complete fuck up and I love it. I didn't see that coming. Amanda has never been more interesting than she is here. 
and the main characters were likeable and I was gripped by them. Dr. Lin is wearing a necklace that will blow up if Jigsaw dies and yet she's forced to do brain surgery on him. Yikes, one mistake and she's dead. It's very gross but it's fucking scary and unique. I haven't seen that done in any other film before. This is cool. Plus, I really dig the main victim, Jeff. His story kind of brings back Saw 1 psychological aspects. Jeff is miserable after losing his son in a tragic accident and now he lives his life burning for vengeance. And now he's in a test where he has to choose whether or not the people who were involved in his accident live or die. It's a fascinating concept, I love it. Saw 3 operates on a human level. I mean, for example, at one point, instead of having to cut off his own limbs or something, Jeff has to burn his son's toys in order to save someone. It's interesting. But sadly, this is what I can't stand about these moments. This film is fucking disgusting, and this is what inspired the rest of the franchise to be this way. The traps are not only grim, they're unrealistic as hell. I mean, there's one trap that involves liquidizing dead pigs in order to drown this guy. Like, seriously? That's just theatrics for us as the audience. If you imagine this happening in real life, think about the effort it took to get these dead pigs and all that. It's just... Ugh. But still, it did end on a very strong note. They actually kill off both Jigsaw and Amanda, which is very bold, and Jeff loses his game. But his punishment isn't death. He now has to save his daughter. And the idea of Jeff playing a game Jigsaw planned for after his death is unique as hell. Guys, I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Saw 3 is solid, man, and it was the film that gave me hope for the franchise. For me, it healed the wounds from Saw 2. The future looked bright, and with the antagonist dead, Saw 4 was clearly going to end the franchise, right? Making this a nice contained little saga. Oh, dear. Saw 4. Guys, I hate this film, man. It's a bizarre, strange mess. The plot is so convoluted, okay? There's an army of characters who just come and go. Loads of locations and time skips. It's just hard to follow. It doesn't have movie structure. It's just a load of noise and extreme violence. Like, why is that nameless cop impelled in the head? <laughs> Billy the puppet exploding in a woman's face. Stop it. Yikes. I did find some hope, but that hope was always held back by something. I really like Rig as the main protagonist. He's a committed cop and a caring friend. It's just that his game is full of awful violence and loads of locations and stupidity. It's just not for me, man. And John's wife, Jill, is interesting here. It's quite a unique concept, you know. The fact that she's constantly harassed by the media and police because her husband is Jigsaw is <laughs> cool. And I do like her flashback scenes. You get to see what John was like before Jigsaw. The problem is, is that all the police surrounding this story are just typical soap opera, bad acting police officers. Can't stand them, it gets on my nerves. And the flashback scenes with Jigsaw... As always, he is interesting and Tobin Bell is amazing, but they retcon Saw 1's twist. According to this film, he was Jigsaw before he was diagnosed. He was 100% sane for the first 50 odd years of his life, but then he loses a child, and that's what turned him to become this. Cancer was just fuel on top of the fire. I know that cancer isn't exactly Shakespeare, okay, it's not an amazing reveal, but it worked in Saw 1. I don't like them retconning it, it's just fucking stupid. And as if I couldn't be disappointed in this film enough, the third act came. Okay, look, first of all, I love Eric now. Him being a victim who was trapped for so long, now growing a beard and all that, is interesting. It's just that he escaped Saw 3 and he shouldn't be here. I mean, even if he is just a pawn in Rig's game, he should be let go. But then they waste Eric and Rig at the same time. And add to that, the twist where Rig being on time was the wrong move is insanely dumb. I don't know what they were thinking when they wrote this. 
But the twist where Hoffman is revealed to be Jigsaw's psychic, I kind of dig it now because the next film explained it in a satisfying way, but at the time, it didn't feel earned. It's just a copy of Saw 2's twist, except there's no shock, because unlike Amanda, we didn't get to know much about Hoffman before he was revealed. <laughs> Plus, sadly, now that this guy's the new Jigsaw, I knew that they were going to continue milking the franchise, and they did. Now I gotta talk about the whole side call reveal. I remember when I first saw this, little 16 year old me was thinking, this mess is not the film Saw 3's ending got me excited for. Why aren't they continuing Saw 3's ending? And what happened to Jeff? And then we learn that Saw 4 is a sequel. It's set during the events of Saw 3. And at first that got me excited. Oh cool, oh, look, there's Jeff. Yes, now they're gonna continue his story, right? There is my daughter! You That's how they continue Saw 3 by killing Jeff 10 seconds after Saw 3's ending, throwing away the nice reveal of Jeff now having to find his daughter before her air runs out. So no, I'm not a fan of the cycle twist if it leads to this. However, there's something else about the cycle idea that's worse. The idea of this taking place at the same time as Saw 3, for me, completely killed any resemblance of believability, and it turned this franchise into pure fantasy. Look, I got that this was a bit far-fetched before, but I could still believe in all of it. But now we got games being played at the same time with these insane traps that are getting more and more elaborate as time goes on. How could anyone do this, especially if they're dying? And all of the games that come later on John still made them before he died? Like, what is this shit? Look at this. What is that? What's this shit? Fuck this, man. It's crazy. And I know some people will think that John having multiple sidekicks makes all of this believable. You know, he had people helping him set all of this up, right? But no. For me, that makes it even crazier. The subsequent films reveal that by this point in the timeline, John had fucking more people helping him. Amanda, Hoffman, Jill, Dr. Gordon, Logan, and if you want to include Obby from Soul 2, that's six fucking people. John managed to find that many like-minded people in such a short period of time, all helping him set up this clusterfuck of violence. Hell no. This isn't complex, it's convoluted. I can't keep up with Saw 4 just by itself, but when I try fitting it in with the other films, it's like I'm learning to read foreign braille with my tongue. <laughs> this is the one that sent the story to its grave. Yes, I do enjoy some of the scenes with Jigsaw, but still, this film blows. So I'm going to give Saw 4 a 4. Fuck this film, guys. Saw 5 At first when I saw this I was nervous because so far the franchise had been hit, miss, hit, double miss and yeah this one is very flawed. Once the intro told me that Jigsaw's lot actually planned for Agent Strum to be there I thought oh no, Saw 4 stench is all over this. <laughs> and I really don't like the victim subplot. Some of the characters do smart things, but we all know what's in store for them. They're not that likeable, and it doesn't add to much more than gore. And the exposition? It's hilarious. Not only does the main character, Agent Strom, just say the plot out loud for us. We were all supposed to die. You were supposed to be the hero. The whole of Saw 5 feels like exposition, purely made to explain Saw 4's arbitrary twist. But you know what, guys? Saw 5 is still a pill I swallow easily. The overall story is much easier to follow this time around. There are less time skips and characters, making this a much tighter story. And again, I thought Saw 4's twist was about the blue, but Saw 5 explains it in a very satisfying way. I really dig Mark Hoffman here. And the scene where he meets Jigsaw is interesting and really tense. I've heard many people complain about Costas Mandalore's performance as him, but I really dig him. 
He's ruthless, cunning, scary, but unlike John and Amanda, he's physically imposing. This guy is fucking dangerous. I think he's one of the highlights of the sequels, I dig him. And the film ended on a powerful note. I assure you, I do not like watching Agent Strom get slowly crushed to death. But that is the point. To me, this did not feel satisfying, it felt fucking terrifying. And I can't think of any other film that ends like this. This is horror. And definitely, I think this is a big step up from the last film. So I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Source 6. So I don't like this as much as other fans, but... I do think this one is okay. First of all, I'm impressed with the way it continues seconds after Saw 5's horrifying ending. It actually shows Agent Strom's crushed body. Again, I've never seen that before, and I'll never forget it. That's, that's horrible. But I'm a real big fan of the test plot this time round, because it actually has some type of political statement about the healthcare industry in America and it doesn't feel forced. I know, a Saw movie, who'd have thought? <laughs> Jigsaw's latest subject is William, and I actually really started to care for him because, sure, he's fucking horrible, but he quickly learns the error of his ways. And plus, I really like the concept of his game. In real life, William decides who gets healthcare and who doesn't, meaning he picks who lives and who dies. But now, in Jigsaw's game, he has to do the same thing, except now he has to see the outcome of his choices. Plus, I fucking adore the flashback scenes with him and John. Tobin Bell is just incredible here. The type of cancer you have is malignant and inoperable. It rolled off your tongue real smooth. The cancer will return eventually. It's an unwinnable battle. That was even smoother. As a matter of fact, that was downright slick. Like, seriously, that is just awesome, man. Damn. But sadly, William's story is plagued by the typical, you know, some of the traps, like the spiral trap for example, are so silly and over the top, it's just theatrics, I can't buy that any of Jigsaw's crew build this. And the ending where William dies by getting injected with acid, I can't fucking stand it. Now, Saw 5's horrifying ending felt earned to me, because it actually did something for the plot. You know, Hoffman uses Agent Strom's hand to plant fingerprints all over the place, framing him as Jigsaw's accomplice. But here, William's death does nothing for the story, man. It's just there to entertain gorehounds. I mean, why else would there be acid injections, you know? And it pissed me off because I saw William as more than just dead me. But hey, it's a Saw film. It's my fault for getting my hopes up. What was I meant to expect? And when it comes to Hoffman and the whole police element, it feels a little bit too Saw 4. Hoffman arbitrarily turns into a sadist. Let's be honest. You want him to suffer just as much as I do. It turns out Jill was helping John become Jigsaw. Uh, I don't know. And remember Agent Perez? Yeah, me neither. I had to look her up in order to make this point. She was the one who was hospitalized by the exploding puppet in Saw 4. Well, in Saw 5, it was revealed that she was dead, and now she's alive. Uh, why? You know, she's not important enough for any of us to care, and she's gonna die again in a few minutes, so what's the point of all of these twists? Uh, what, did the writers struggle to find new people to kill? <laughs> I don't know. And plus, the ending twist really does stink. It's There's nothing interesting there. Meh. Uh, but still, I guess there is something to appreciate in this film. Even if it does mostly end on a sour note, eh, I'll still give it a 5.5. Soul 7, aka Soul the Final Chapter, aka Soul 3D. Oh, I'll never forget it. When I first saw the trailer advertising the 3D, I had to go online to see if it was a joke. It wasn't. <laughs> In my mind, there was no debate. Story had almost completely gone out the window, and all the violence I already hated was now going to not only look worse, but be even more prevalent in the film. Because now, 
this film is relying on the violence more than ever. Add to that, I knew the 3D was going to age, and if you watch this film at home without 3D, it's going to look ridiculous. Welp, I was right. All of these lame excuses for extra games, the awful intro game set in public, Jill's dream sequence where she gets killed, all of these flashback scenes with death in them, it's all just to showcase the 3D, it feels so forced. Plus, the 3D did something to the image, man, the blood is fucking pink. In fact, all of the reds are pink. It's ridiculous. I, I do know there are some versions out there where they fix this, but so far I haven't seen them, and I don't like this film enough to seek them out, so who cares? <laughs> now, when it comes to this character Bobby, him being a liar claiming to have survived the Jigsaw game and profiting from the lie, You and I both know you have never been in a trap, nor have you ever been tested. That's kind of cool, that's a unique concept. And the whole group therapy session full of Jigsaw survivors is unique. But it's just a concept, guys. It's not that gripping, the characters are all put there to suffer for amusement, and then it just freaking ends with more grimness. Why does Bobby's innocent wife have to burn to death? You know, just to please us. This right here is the end of his story, because now that he has suffered, he is no longer useful to the story. Yeah, I can't stand it, it's just freaking awful. Plus, that furnace that appears out of the blue is just... <laughs> it looks like something a Bond villain would make. I, I don't... <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. Hoffman, I guess, is kind of scary. He's running around being a typical slasher. Eventually, he does kill Jill with the reverse bear trap, which is the first time we've ever seen someone die from it. <laughs> but I don't care for the violence, so it doesn't mean shit to me. But now, let's talk about the main, main twist. Dr. Gordon. Yeah, I've got to admit, guys. Seeing Carrie Elway's come back was a fucking treat. And the biggest question was answered. What happened to Dr. Gordon? That was the main draw for this film. Like, even fans of Saw 1, who hate the sequels, still turned up for this just to see the biggest question answered. And it was really cool. Plus... A lot of Dr. Gordon's story elements in this film were actually taken off of fan sites, and I know that because Teenage Me read them. It was really cool seeing them appear on the big screen. I saw multiple fans theorizing that maybe he could burn his wound shut with hot pipes, and yeah, it happened. Plus, Jigsaw limping in the intro of Saw 2 seemed to be out of the blue, so people theorized maybe it was Dr. Gordon limping with a prosthetic foot. And that's what happened. It's really cool. But at the same time, he only gets a few scenes. And only a few lines of dialogue. Add to that, you can just see the twist coming a mile away. That scene where he turns up for the group therapy session. It's a remarkable feat indeed. If not a little perverse. How grateful we are to be part of your promotional. It was so obvious he was going to be on Jigsaw's side. His appearance and voice screams villain. <laughs> but add to that, the concept of Dr. Gordon siding with Jigsaw is freaking stupid. Remember, not only did Jigsaw force him to cut off his own foot and shoot someone, he also tried to get his wife and daughter killed. Is that a joke? But hey, at least Hoffman is left to starve to death. It's a very fitting end for a very horrible person. That's the end of the franchise, and that's the end of Carrie Elway's suffering at the hands of all of the fan mail he got asking what happened to Dr. Gordon. Yikes, I don't like this one. I'm gonna give Saw 7 a 4. Seriously, this was the film that made me fall out of love with the franchise. Almost every fucking thing I liked in this franchise ends bad. Not just the franchise itself, but Dr. Gordon, Adam, Eric, Rig, Jeff, William, Saw 3's ending, ugh. So I fell out of love with the franchise. I honestly stopped caring about it. It wasn't worth making any sequels to the first one. All of them in my eyes just disrespected the original and I just stopped caring.
but then Jigsaw came out. I don't have too much to say about it, so I'm just going to rush through it. I like the way it's not as gory, and the story is not too convoluted. It has an identity of its own. There's loads of daytime shots, characters leave the house, go to bars. There's no quick editing, interfering with the conversations and shit. I just dig it. The characters are a lot better this time round, and Tobin Bell making a return was a nice fucking treat. You know, plus, there is this scene where all of the previous traps appear in one big room. Now, yes, I'm not a fan of these traps. They're way too futuristic and over the top. They're not realistic at all. Still, it was kind of nice watching Jigsaw tie itself to the previous films. I guess those traps would make it into some type of museum, right? It's cool. But of course, it does have a lot of stupidity. That whole plan of Ryan getting his leg caught is just remarkably dumb. Plus, it makes the old ones even more convoluted as there's so much more to fit in with the mix. Like, this is a prequel as well as a sequel, and it's just ridiculous. And the ending twist is just okay. It's another accomplice for Jigsaw, we've seen it so many times by this point, and the character Nolan outright explaining this twist to us is kind of embarrassing. But look, I really did kind of enjoy this one, and I think it deserves a lot more credit than fans gave it. So I'm going to give this one a 6. Whew, that was a long one. Now I could feel my voice starting to go, but I'm still not done yet. I now want to talk about how John Kramer, aka Jigsaw, was written. Because in my eyes, damn the writer's fucked up. Now look, it doesn't matter whether you're a fan of this series or not. I think we can all agree that John is a hypocrite and has been from the start. In Saw 1, he preaches the value of life, yet is willing to risk killing innocent people, including a child. And the sequels continue this hypocrisy. Jigsaw doesn't want his wife to get fucked with, but how many times has he fucked with somebody else's wife? Saw 7, Dr. Gordon's wife, Jeff's wife, all of them pretty innocent people, guys. Plus, he claims he's never killed anyone. Yet he creates multiple traps where someone has to die in order for someone to survive. But even worse, I don't condone murder and I despise murderers. He doesn't condone murder? Well, in Saw 1, he forced Dr. Gordon to, yeah, kill Adam. He forced Zap to potentially kill Dr. Gordon's family and he forced Amanda to kill this man. He clearly doesn't despise murderers because Amanda became his fucking sidekick. <laughs> Jigsaw has been a hypocrite from the start. End off. So obviously there are holes in his logic and he keeps contradicting himself. Fine, that's his character trait, I don't mind that. Here's the issue guys. As the sequels went on, I stopped seeing it as the character contradicting himself. I saw it as the writers contradicting themselves, contradicting the foundation one and one L placed back in 2004. Let me explain. In my opinion, Saw 1 presented Jigsaw as evil, a typical psychopathic villain. Yeah, sure he had a message to preach, he was trying to get his victims to appreciate life, but that doesn't stop him from being evil, okay? Think about it. Jigsaw clearly had a god complex, he enjoyed watching his games play out right in front of him, and just like the villains in other horror films, all bets are off, he's willing to kill anyone over pretty much anything. Mark kept skipping work, pretending to be ill, and for that he deserves to burn to death? <laughs> I mean, clearly Jigsaw took that personally because he was sick. And just like the movie 7, he enjoyed turning the sin against the sinner. So I do think this guy was psychopathic and vengeful. Paul attempted suicide by slitting his wrists. So now he has to cut himself even deeper by being trapped by barbed wire. Dr. Gordon had to saw off his own foot and murder Adam because he contemplated cheating on his wife. He didn't go through with it, but even if he did have an affair... Did he really deserve all of this shit? A fucking course not. This is nuts. And to top all of that off, 
Adam is left to starve to death because he didn't saw off his own foot. And that's his punishment for losing the key down the drain <laughs> and for simply spying on Dr. Gordon. That's it. Because Jigsaw never spied on anyone, right? Jigsaw is fucking evil, guys. Why else did he slit an innocent cop's throat rather than be arrested? Don't tell me he wasn't trying to kill Tap here. And straight after, he sets up booby traps so Detective Singh gets his head blown off. Are you really going to try and convince me that Jigsaw wasn't evil in this film? But I'm not complaining. I think that's great. It made the concept scary and relatable. Because any of us guys could end up in Jigsaw's game. It doesn't take much to piss him off. If you're fat and you have a bad diet, you prefer the taste of cheap junk food to the health of your own body. Now cut off your tongue. But if you do eat well and take care of your body, it seems to me you spend your life lifting weights and looking in the mirror. Now cut off your face with the mirror and shove a dumbbell up your ass. <laughs> Look, you can't win. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win with this guy, man. He's willing to kill children. Anyone could be a part of this psychopath's game. And it's awesome. It's a great scary concept and makes for good storytelling. I can't see it any other way. In Soul 1, Jigsaw was a psychopath and almost completely devoid of humanity. Even Soul 2 kind of continued that trait. But from there, the writers decided to humanize him which could be bold and interesting, but to me, they went about it the wrong way. It turns out, John Kramer was not evil. He spent the first 50 years of his life being completely normal. But then the loss of his child and cancer turned him into Jigsaw. Seriously, they expect me to believe that? All of this is not the work of a sane rich engineer who snapped after experiencing loss and cancer if you guys buy that that's great but i can't get with you guys this is ridiculous to me but even worse for me the writers stretched this whole humanizing the villain idea and almost turned jigsaw into an anti-hero because he started testing people who actually deserve it in my eyes racists rapists bent cops killers it gets to the point where Jigsaw doesn't feel like the villain, because sometimes he's actually not the worst one in the room. In Soul 3, he wants to let Dr. Ling go. Unlock her collar and let her go. I said no! In Soul 4, he faces the killer of his child. In Soul 6, he meets William, and I don't see John as a killer. I see him as an innocent, dying man in need of help, which was a big mistake to me. So, of course, the writers have attempted to humanize Jigsaw and make him an anti-hero. But then they fuck up and keep turning him back into the evil villain from the first film. Take the movie Jigsaw, for example, okay? The character Logan makes a mistake with John's x-rays, which helped perpetuate John's cancer. So, John puts Nolan in a game, but then changes his mind and saves him because... John decided I shouldn't have to die over an honest mistake. Sounds rational to me, guys. I agree with John. And his sympathetic look shows he has humanity. I'm with him. But then in Soul 3, there's the character Timothy, who accidentally ran over and killed Jeff's son. And for that, honest mistake, he is placed in the rack, where his limbs are slowly twisted and John himself admits that this rack is his personal favorite the device Timothy is strapped to is my personal favorite there we go that's the psycho from Soul 1 that is sadistic devoid of all humanity and completely contradicts his earlier words because remember John's scenes in Jigsaw are set before Soul 3 and then it continues again in the movie Jigsaw John is testing Anna because she murdered her baby. She's a monster. I'm completely on John's side. Test the bitch. Fuck it. 
kill her. She squandered the gift John would give anything to have, so I'm completely with him. But then he encourages child murder in Saw 1, and at the end of Saw 3, it's revealed that he's imprisoned Jeff's daughter with a limited supply of air. How's he any better than Anna? Unless John told Hoffman to save the girl if Jeff failed, I don't know, it's never explained why Hoffman had her in the beginning of Saw 5, so who knows by this point. But speaking of the daughter in Saw 3, that was Jeff's punishment for picking vengeance over forgiveness. But at the end of Saw 6, the son does the same thing by killing William with acid injections instead of forgiving him. Where the fuck was his test? It just makes no sense, he seems to have favoritism over certain victims. But the randomness doesn't stop there guys. Remember in Saw 2's intro? The cops break into John's lair, right? Cause Jigsaw wants to be cool. And yet he still sets up a load of traps so the cops can arbitrarily break their legs and get electrocuted. I'm sure they're dead from that, by the way. I don't know why he did that, but still, hey, that's Jigsaw from Saw 1. And in Saw 3, Detective Allison is chosen to be tested simply because she studies the dead? Because she's doing her job? Dr. Lin obviously doesn't deserve to have a bomb necklace for fuck's sake. And Rig, why was he being tested in Saw 4? He did nothing wrong, he was just obsessed with finding his missing friends. He obviously values life and the lives of his friends. Again, in Soul 7, I don't know why that wife had to burn to death, she was completely innocent. And of course, in the intro to Soul 7, there was that stupid love triangle. I don't know where Jigsaw found the time to care about that when he was just recently dealing with healthcare professionals and murderers and rapists, I don't get it. And the list goes on and on and on. My point is, these are the actions of the psychopath from Soul 1. Not the humanized anti-hero the writers retconned into the story. This character makes no fucking sense. The more the writers added to him, the more they took away. And I'm really pissed off because I fucking adored Jigsaw in the first film. He was so, so creepy and scary. But now, I almost feel safe when I look at him on screen. I also think it's strange that Hoffman is portrayed as a monster because he is one. But... After a while, John wasn't really portrayed as a monster, and he should be, because I think he's just as bad as Hoffman, possibly worse. He's killed innocent people with his disgusting devices, and he put children at risk. I mean, at the end of Soul 7, when Hoffman gets locked up, I'm satisfied because he was evil. He deserves this. But if John was put in this position, I'd feel sad. And that's not because I'm crazy, it's because the writers retconned this guy into some type of sweet, dying old man. I think that's really silly. And when I think about it, it is no wonder that Jigsaw's sidekicks can't follow his law. Because neither can he. (laughs) I don't know what they were thinking. And now, I want to talk about Dr. Gordon. Look, seriously, why did John help him? Dr. Gordon failed his game. Now sure, he cut off his own foot and shot Adam, but that was after 6 o'clock. He was too late. We're out of time. Dr. Gordon's time is up. Plus, he didn't kill Adam like he was supposed to, so why does he get help for failing his game? And yet Adam is left to rot. You could say that Jigsaw saw Dr. Gordon's will to live, but Adam proved his own will to live by not only killing Zeb with a bullet in his shoulder, but also saving Dr. Gordon in the process. Adam is a fucking hero, man. He's the reason why Dr. Gordon gets to go back to his family. That's more than enough to vindicate Adam's minor sins that got him chained up in the first place. So why does Dr. Gordon get Jigsaw's blessing? Add to that, if John really felt Dr. Gordon should live... Why didn't he just stand up and try to stop Zep from shooting him? I'll tell you why. Because this fucking dumb twist where Jigsaw likes Dr. Gordon was never planned from the start. The psychopath who leaves Adam to starve to death is not the guy we see in the subsequent films. 
This is bad writing. But you know what, guys? There's one more point I want to make. And I'm going to end it with this. In Soul 7, it was revealed that Dr. Gordon had been working with Jigsaw after Soul 1. Most fans took that well, and it left them feeling uplifted. But I don't get it. Dr. Gordon has helped a serial killer torture innocent people to death, making him the villain. How is that positive? This is like... Let me use the Halloween films as an example. In the first Halloween, Michael Myers is a psychopath. He murders a lot of innocent teens and a traumatized Jamie Lee Curtis survives. But now, let's pretend that we got a load of sequels that made us identify with Michael Myers because we got to see his soft side. And we learn that he committed all of these murders based on the loss of his child. Before then, he was 100% normal. But on top of that, Michael is then portrayed as an anti-hero because he's mostly killing people who deserve it. Killers, rapists, you get it. And because we've learned to like him now, we forget that he occasionally goes back to murdering innocent teens again. But to top all of that off, we then find out that J.B. Lee Curtis has been helping Michael Myers kill ever since the first film because now she somehow appreciates all the trauma Michael gave her and now she helps him kill criminals along with the occasional innocent teen. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? It would be very unsatisfying, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, because I saw it happen in the Saw films. <laughs> Yikes, so that's the end of it. I know a lot of you will say that I thought way too hard about this franchise, but I think it's justified because the first one actually encouraged you to think. The following films? Not so much. To me, these sequels aren't canon. I just see them as expensive fan fiction, sort of like all the Terminator movies that came after Terminator 2. Sure, some I appreciate by themselves, but the reality is, when I watch the original, I'm never thinking to myself, these sequels are what come next. So, I think the only way to truly fix all of this is to retcon every sequel and just make one sequel to the original, a true version of Saw 2. Again, just like the Terminator franchise, Terminator Dark Fate tried to be the true version of Terminator 3, except I'm hoping this new version of Saw 2 is good. <laughs> Use the aging software to make the actors look younger, take it back to its psychological roots by not making it extra gory with futuristic traps, and for the love of God, get James Wan and Lee Whannell back to write the script. Because it's been almost 20 years, guys, and I still don't know what happened to Dr. Gordon. Yeah, sure, the writers tried telling me what happened to him, but I just don't believe it all. So I want them to fix this. But I know it won't happen. Hollywood wants to make money, and they know that the money is in the gore now. And that's a huge shame to me, because Saw will always be one of my favorites, but it will also be held back by the subsequent films for me. But anyway, we got Spiral just around the corner, and I'm pretty excited for it. I'm hoping it doesn't rely too heavily on the violence and it tells an interesting story. I hope Chris Rock is good and Hopefully, just for once, just for fucking once, maybe one of the good guys lives at the end and in the next film doesn't get arbitrarily killed off. I really hope Chris Rock doesn't burn to death or something or join sides with Jigsaw, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to review that one next, but for now, I just want to say if you stuck with me from the beginning to the end, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. This one was really freaking hard to make. So I'ma love you and leave ya. Thanks for watching guys. Stay jiggy. The better appreciate ya.